Razor is a server-side syntax for embedding .NET code into web pages. This means that we can incorporate c -sharp code within the HTML code. Files containing Razor code typically have a .cshtml extension. On the other hand, component files that also contain Razor code have the .razor extension. That's why Blazor utilizes this extension. Lastly, this syntax is very similar to various template engines from well-known frameworks that are based on JavaScript, such as Angular, React, Vue.js, and Svelte. In this video, we're going to have our first approach to Razor syntax. To do this, we must have a previously created project. We will choose the simplest template that exists to work with or test the Razor syntax. For this, we will create a new project. As part of the templates we are looking for, we will look for the template called ASP.NET Core. Ok, we have different templates. We are interested in the one that has the term empty. We will click on next. We will give it a name such as, for example, Razor Syntax Demo. We will click on next again. We leave the default configuration and click on create to make this project. Once we have created this project, we can see that in the Solution Explorer, we have very few files that form our project, among them a file called program.cs, which basically contains the logic of our application. We will modify this file slightly to add a Razor page and to work with it or run tests on this page. How can we do this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is add a line between these two lines that you see, the one that has to do with the builder, create builder. And here, where this builder is constructed and the app variable is assigned, we will add a line that will be builder.services.addRazorPages. This is done specifically to be able to work with Razor pages. As part of the next section, we're going to remove this app.mapget that we won't be needing at this moment and instead, what we're going to proceed to do is app.mapRazorPages. We place the semicolon and parentheses and with these few modifications we've made, we're now capable of displaying Razor pages as part of our project. The next step is to create a folder as part of the project. Click on Add New Folder and name it Pages. Within this newly created folder, we will create a new Razor page. As part of this process, we indicate that we want a blank page. Let's click on Add. We'll keep the default name, which is index.cshtml. Click on Add, and with this, we'll have our first Razor page on which we'll be performing various tests. To keep this page as clean as possible, we're going to remove this line we have here, and we'll leave only the add page at the top. To test this, to test the page we've created, we'll simply add the standard HTML code and type, for instance, hello Razor. We'll save the changes and run the application to ensure everything functions properly. Ok, after a few seconds, we see that our page has been launched and it includes the paragraph tag we specified earlier, with the text Hello Razor. With this, we've created our project and are ready to conduct various tests with the Razor syntax. We have previously said that the Razor will allow us to combine HTML code with c -sharp code. How can we do this? Well, we're going to transition from HTML markup code to c -sharp using an add symbol. For example, let's say we want to display the current time. We can place a p paragraph tag and say exact time is. Then, on a subsequent line, we will use the add symbol. When we use this add symbol, notice that there are different classes, properties, methods, etc. Available for us as part of this file we are working on. This means that I can use, for instance, date time, which you probably have used before, as it's a well known structure, 
and I can display the current time using dot now hour. If we save the changes to this file and return to our page and refresh it, you'll see that no information corresponding to the line we wrote earlier is displayed. This is happening because we are running the application. In other words, the application has already been compiled and is displaying the desired result. If we want to make changes to the code, we simply cannot do it or were not able to do it before. What we can do is use a new feature called Hot Reload, which works by clicking this red button located at the top of Visual Studio. If we click this button and then go back to the page and refresh it, the number corresponding to the time we wrote in this line of code now appears. How can we speed up this process? Well, right here we have a drop down next to the Hot Reload button. We can deploy it and click on this option so that the compiler tries to execute a hot reload type operation when the file is saved. I select this option, which now appears selected. Once we've selected this option, which is now marked, we can go ahead and make modifications in our code. For example, adding an extra S at the end of our P tag, saving the changes, and notice how this button becomes disabled, indicating that it's carrying out the necessary update. If we go back to our page and refresh it, you'll notice that the S we added earlier is now present. This is how we can add C Sharp code into our HTML code. Another thing we can do as part of this process is that we can add different elements one after the other. For instance, if we wanted to display the hour, then the minutes, and then the seconds, we could do that. If we add a colon after the hour specification, you might think this would mark some type of error because this part of the hour is stuck to the colon. Let's see what happens if we save the changes and go back to the web page. Nothing has happened. The colon is simply being written as if it's HTML code. This is because Razor or the compiler knows exactly where this property we're using ends. Once the use of this property is finished, it knows that what follows should be interpreted as HTML code. So here, if we wanted to add, for example, extra minutes or the minutes to this hour we're writing, we could do so again through the add symbol to indicate that we want to use C sharp code again date time dot now dot minute. To indicate the minutes, we can again add two columns, as the compiler already knows where this property ends, then add an add symbol followed by date time dot now dot second. Let's save the changes. They'll update through hot reload. We return to our page and now we're displaying the current time according to the format we have specified. You could replace these two points with a slash, and so on. Another thing you can do is utilize methods as part of this razor syntax. For instance, we could simplify this entire line we're looking at here through an exact time, for example. It is two colons, then date, type, dot, now, dot, and from here, we can choose from all the available methods, one of which is to short time string. This is a method, therefore we need to add a pair of parentheses. This is also acceptable. We go to our page, refresh, and there we have the current time, but using this to short time string method. Now, one of the cases you might encounter while developing Razor-based applications is that you may need to print an expression that contains the add symbol. For instance, the Twitter username of a person. How do we do this? How can we solve this? Let's say we need to write someone's username. So if we were to write an add symbol at the person's ID, here the engine will throw an error because it indicates that this variable is not recognized or there isn't a property named after the username. Now, if we needed to escape this add symbol, we simply need to add a second add symbol and this would solve the problem. We save the changes, return to the page, and now the person's username is being displayed. An exception to this rule, as we previously mentioned, 
occurs with email addresses. If, for example, we wanted to display an email to the user, notice what happens. I'm going to input a fictitious email here, at gmail.com, for instance. We might expect an error message from the compiler. However, this isn't happening. If we save the changes and return to the page, notice that the email is already displayed here. This happens because the compiler recognizes that it's an email address and basically bypasses the rule we've previously indicated, correctly displaying the email. Type of expressions we have been using, like this one that prints the minutes or prints the hours, are called implicit razor expressions. They are those that start with an add symbol, followed by C sharp code, like the example we have here. There are different rules that we will apply when we use implicit razor expressions. One of them is that they should not contain any kind of spaces, except for certain occasions that we will see a little later. We are going to return to our file, insert an h2 tag, and label it implicit expressions, to distinguish a bit from what we have done previously. An invalid case, or well, one you can't perform with an implicit expression, is for example if you have two expressions on which you want to perform some type of operation. For example, if you wanted to print a date prior to today, you might think that using at daytime dot now minus and an expression like a time span from days and a specific number of days is permitted. But this expression contains spaces as we are seeing in this example. If we save the changes and return to the page, You'll see that the current date is displayed and the minus symbol and expression are being shown directly in the code or on the page. We wrote this and it breaks the rule I mentioned earlier about spaces because it can no longer be evaluated as a single expression. Later, we will see how we can handle these types of expressions. On the other hand, a valid case or where we can indeed have spaces is when we want to use an expression that employs an await. For example, we could have another paragraph tag here. We could make use of add await and then invoke an async method. This is valid. However, there is another rule which we need to be mindful of. Another scenario that's not valid is when we're using generics. For instance, suppose we need to use a method, say, my method. And here, if we wanted to use a generic, for example, int, you see that we're already encountering some problems. Even if I successfully complete this int, the compiler is wrapping up this closing tag, assuming it's an HTML tag, which is incorrect because it's interpreting it as HTML code, as part of this expression I have here. So, this is something we have to be careful of. We will again look at how to resolve this issue later. Finally, another scenario where it is valid to use spaces is when the statement has a clear end. In this case, it is indeed possible to mix spaces within it. What do we mean by this? Well, suppose we need to use a method as part of this p tag, such as one called comparing strings, that carries out some comparison of strings to check if they are equal or not. Well, in this case, we can use a method that's included in or forms part of our string type called compareOrdinal. In this instance, this method receives various parameters that we can specify to determine if a pair of strings are equal or not. For instance, let's compare the string abc with the string abc. For example, in this case, the compiler knows that we have a method named compareOrdinal, which only requires two parameters. With this, he knows where our expression will end and therefore using spaces as in this case is indeed valid. So these are some rules we have with implicit razor expressions. What you desire is to have a set of expressions within the same block, the ideal scenario is to use something called an explicit expression. Previously we stated or we noticed that the expression shown on the screen was not valid, or rather, it's valid because it displays something, but doesn't fulfill the function that we are pointing towards. We can easily solve this with an explicit razor expression. 
we're now going to insert an H2 tag to slightly separate the code. What I'm going to do next is, to avoid rewriting the whole line, I'll copy and paste it. Here, what we're going to do is designate where this expression will begin using an opening parenthesis. We're going to mark the end of this expression using a closing parenthesis, which will close off our expression or set of expressions. Notice that even the color of time span and from days has changed because the compiler is now recognizing its existence. A start and an end for our set of expressions. We're going to save the changes to see what our code reflects. Here we have the correct and satisfactory outcome, which is the result of subtracting this expression from our current date that we set out earlier. Another instance where we can use an explicit razor expression is, for example, if there's an exception where we need an email expression to not evaluate, just like in the example shown on the screen now. I'm going to demonstrate an example as part of our Razor page. For instance, let's add a paragraph tag. Now, let's write today, at, and if I were to write daytime, dot now, here, note what happens when I refresh this page. Here, I have this displayed as it is because it is recognizing this expression as if it were an email. This is not true. What I want to show is the current date. Well, what I could do here then is to add a pair of parentheses to delineate this razor expression. Let's tackle the changes. We return to our page and notice how this has successfully changed. It no longer shows the text as I had written it. Instead, it reflects an actual value. Lastly, I had previously explained that there was a problem if you wanted to use generics as part of your expressions. Well, this can also be resolved through explicit expressions. Suppose you have a generic method that you wish to invoke with the name, for instance, my method, and you need to use a type of generic, for instance, int. Initially, we don't have any problem because we need to put an at sign at the beginning of the expression. Once we put this at sign, we have a problem here because it is indicating that this method doesn't exist, which is true, we haven't created a method called that. However, if we remove this tag, notice how the compiler or the editor does some strange things that we don't want. Here we have more problems. Well, we could once again resolve this situation by adding a pair of parentheses. Here we are missing the parentheses to invoke this method. With this, we would resolve this issue of using generics. Notice that when I write generic int, it no longer automatically completes the closing tag because it recognizes that it belongs to or forms part of the C sharp code. Here we have the problem that the method does not exist, which is correct. This is how we can work with explicit expressions in Razor. There will be occasions when the use of expressions, like the ones we've previously discussed, won't be enough for the type of work we aim to develop. For instance, there will be times when we would want to have different statements in different lines to carry out complex tasks, and for that, a special type of block called Razor Code Blocks will be of assistance. Unlike simple and explicit expressions, these code blocks won't ever be rendered we can identify a razor code block as it contains the following structure. An add symbol, the opening brace, and a closing brace. The opening brace should be attached to the add symbol, and within this pair of braces, we'll be able to write C-sharp code. Any C-sharp code that we desire. It's as if we had a class within which we can write declarations of variables, properties, methods, etc. Another crucial point is that anything declared as part of this Razor code block will have the same scope as our current or viewed Razor file. What this means is that if we declare a variable inside this block, it will have the same scope as this entire document. That is to say, we'll be able to use that variable as part of the same file we are working on. 
Let's take a look at a practical example of a racer code block. For this, before our block, we will proceed to enter an H2 tag and within, for instance, type code blocks to differentiate from what we've done so far. Inside this code block, we will declare, for example, a variable named name and assign it the value Hector. Notice that we have no problems with the line we're declaring, unlike the expressions we had previously that limited the use of spaces. What can we do? Well, as part of our document, we could create a paragraph label. To use this variable, remember we could use an expression through the add symbol, followed by the name of our variable, which is name. We don't have any issues now. Let's run this application to see how what we've done so far displays. Ok, note that we have our application displaying here. The name Hector that we specified earlier is displaying successfully. It's part of this variable. This is what I mean when I say they have the same scope as the document we're defining a racer code in. Another important point is that the order in which we declare these different blocks does matter. For example, here we declare a variable in this code or piece of code. And here we print a specific name that we specified in our block. However, if we copy this line or set of lines after the name print, we will remove this bar because otherwise we'd have a variable duplication issue. We'll remove bar and change the name to Anna, for example. If we print this variable again one line later, save the changes and refresh the page, you'll see that a different name is now displaying after the first name assignment that we made in the code. So, as I mentioned earlier, the order in which you place your different blocks of code matters significantly. In addition, as part of our Razor code blocks, we can, like in any c -sharp class, add methods. Let's move to the bottom of our document and declare another code block to write a very simple method. For instance, a method named add that takes two parameters, number one and number two. Once we have this declaration, we can simply return the sum of number one and number two. This code is valid C sharp code. Note that it's an ordinary method, but what we could do next is, outside our razor block that we've defined, declare a paragraph tag. For example, 2 plus 2 equals, and we can invoke the add method that we've created through an expression, add add and pass this pair of numbers, for example, 2, 2. Once we've done this, save the changes. Note that we have the correct result being displayed as part of our web page. Just as it is possible to combine c -sharp code with HTML code, we can also add HTML code from our Razor code blocks. The only difference is that in the case of Razor blocks, the HTML content will not be rendered at that moment but someone needs to invoke that part of the Razor code. We can achieve this thanks to the different transitions available in Razor. I'm going to copy and paste a part of the code, and what we have on screen is simply the use of a Razor block with a method called say hello to which we pass a parameter named name. Here, we are adding HTML code that will directly print certain text, but in an HTML format. We are adding valid HTML tags, which we use through an expression that we passed as a parameter earlier. Finally, to print different values, we simply invoke the method within the same razor block twice. Firstly, we pass the first name and then we also pass a second name to display certain values on our page. So, here we are doing an implicit transition where we are basically writing HTML code within your Razor block to render that type of code or HTML code. If we save the changes and update the page, you can see that our text is now being displayed in the format that we specified as part of our say hello method. Another type of transition is the explicitly delimited one. What we need to do to perform this type of transition is simply use a tag called text within a code block. 
we will use this transition when we don't need to use any HTML tags, but just want to display some text. Let's look at a common example, or when we use that type of tag a lot. Firstly, we have a razor block. We have a method called print numbers to print a certain amount of numbers. We define this through this max parameter, and within this we have a for loop in this method. Here, as we are not interested in displaying any type of HTML tag, we are not concerned with, for example, displaying a paragraph or a title tag, etc. We simply want to display that information or text as it is. Because of that, we are using a tag called text. Within the pair of tags, the opening and closing tag, we specify what content we want to display. In this case, we are indicating through the expression that we want to display the variable i, which is the index variable, and we leave a space to be able to see the numbers we are printing. Let's save this information. We refresh our page, and we are successfully displaying each of the numbers that make up this for loop we defined. The final type of transition is the explicit line transition which will allow us to render an entire line as if it were HTML within a code block. For example, we have a code block on the screen. Inside, we have a method called printTutorial, where we essentially want to display a message to the user that says, you have to use. Subsequently, a property called our. So, we have here a problem which indicates that we can't print this text string as it currently is because this is not valid C-sharp code. We can solve it thanks to an explicit line transition, which is achieved by placing an add symbol and two columns. With this, it becomes valid code, as it will be converted into HTML code. Here, as indicated, we're specifying that we want to use an implicit expression to correctly display the current time. Finally, we'll invoke this print tutorial method and see what happens when we update the information. We can now see the result on the screen, which is the text we specified as part of our method, displayed correctly. Lastly, we extract this art property that indicates the current time. These are the types of transitions available as part of Razor. Another point that is important to know as part of Razor is how we can use different c -sharp code control structures as part of our Razor files. We are going to start with the if control structure. I'm going to paste here an example so that you can see it practically and not have to write all the code. Basically, when you want to use an if within your Razor file, you will have to include at if for the comparison and c -sharp code just as you would for any other if. Notice that we are outside of a code block. We are directly writing the at if within the CSHTML file or our Razor file. This is why we are also combining HTML code. Now, when you want to use an else if or an else as part of your if structure, you don't need to place the at again because the compiler already knows that an else if or an else is part of that first if to which you attached the at. Therefore, this expression is entirely valid. In case you want to use a switch type expression, we will see how it looks. We will simply place at switch the comparison and within brackets the different expressions, the different cases you may have in your switch block. We see that it isn't too complicated. This is like writing a switch within a method in a class. Now, for the for case, let's see how this looks. We simply have to add an add symbol before the for or our for loop to specify what the execution of this loop will be. We can also do something very similar with a for each loop. Here we have the for each loop. We will add an add symbol before the for each loop, and with this we will have a normal for each loop, or we can write the for each as we do in a class without any issue. In the case of while, I am creating a code block here to declare a variable j. Next, we will add an add symbol before our loop, in this case, the while loop, 
and we will work with this while loop in the usual manner. We can also use a do while loop, which we will specify as follows. We place an add symbol, or in this case, I'm creating a code block to declare a new variable. We simply place an add before the do, place the while as we normally do in C sharp, and we will have our do while loop ready. Other instances where you would want to use an add symbol is when you, for example, use a using. This can also be done within the razor file by placing an add before our using keyword. Inside, we will include the instance that we want to manage with the IDs possible part. This is how we can also work with usings within razor files. Lastly, if you want to handle exceptions through a try catch, this too is possible. We would simply write add followed by try. Again, there is no need to place an add before catch and finally. The compiler will know exactly where this series of expressions ends. You will then be able to catch various exceptions when working with your razor files. These are the important points you should know when working with razor files, which will come in handy when developing ASP.NET Core applications or Blazor-based applications.